Oh, that's beautiful. You hit the books. Kept your nose clean. Graduated from high school, so you'd rate a good job. All right, stack them up. Take them down. Push them around. That's a good job? Today, a good job for a guy with your abilities is a job in electronics, nuclear power, communications, aircraft mechanics, computer technology, radar, even sonar. All you need is some special training. If you have what it takes, the Navy can be your open door to a great future. Listen to me, man. I'm Lou Rawls. You had the smarts to get your high school diploma. So you stand a good chance of passing the Navy's entrance test. They aren't that tough if you apply yourself. And instead of pushing crates around, you could be an electronic school like these brothers. Of course, everybody has to go through boot camp. You get checked in. You're on that top line in a space marked name. Print your last name, first name, and middle initial. And you get threaded out. And your schooling starts right here. Good morning, man. Good morning, sir. Chief Petty Officer Bender this morning, I'm going to give you a lecture. Of course, you have to get the old bod in shape, you know what I mean? And you learn to swim. Yeah, swim, man, you dig? Nobody's going to shove you in the pool and let you sink. I mean, they will teach you how to handle yourself in the water, you know. Now, you may not make it to the Olympics, but hey, man, you will be able to stay on top side of the water, you know what I mean? Also at boot camp, you'll take a few more tests to find out what you do best. If it's electronics, you might be sent to a school like this one at Great Lakes, Illinois. If mechanics is your thing, you could go to aircraft mechanics school like this one in Memphis, Tennessee. Now back at Great Lakes, they call this a steam generator lab. Here you'll learn how to turn steam into power. Communications, look what the Navy has for you. In fact, the Navy has over 70 vocational training schools that could be open to you. And don't forget, you're getting paid all the time, you understand? What happens after your specialized training? The fleet has the good job you've been looking for. Now you're working as an electronic specialist with all the responsibility and respect you deserve. Or you're working those cool Navy jets aboard a carrier. Communications are essential. As I said, the Navy has over 70 areas that require good, well-trained people. You could be one of those people. And think of the value of this training in civilian life. I'm Petty Officer Second Class Donald Christian. I've been in the Navy 10 years, and I've been on four ships. As it stands now, I'm the senior barber aboard this ship, and I'm also the minority representative. I can sum equal opportunity up as such. For the young black that comes in the Navy today, he has to have a good educational background. He has to have an initiative goal. He has to have self-discipline. And he surely has to have self-motivation. With this combination, a young black in today's Navy can achieve any particular goal he so desire. Don't let anyone tell you that you'll be put on board a ship and left there for months and months. You'll be stopping off at exotic ports, famous historic cities all over the world. And there's something else too. You don't have to go alone. 
The Navy has what they call the buddy system, where you and a friend from home can join the Navy together, and that's a gas. So think it over. How long have you been on that machine, brother? Two years? Three years? Are you beginning to feel like you'll be there forever? <laughs> you know, you're really quite a guy, man. You did well in your math and science courses in high school. And after that, the trade school was easy. Because, you know, you have some kind of a know-how. But you soon found out that doing the same thing day after day is a trash. Why don't you go into something like the nuclear field? I mean it, man. You might be just the guy the Navy's looking for. And it's nuclear field program, and it's far out. Here's what it's all about. After boot camp and a short tour at sea, you start going to school. Now, just saying going to school is like saying the ocean is wet, right? Listen, that schooling you'll get is about two years and of the best training the Navy can provide. Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of training, man. That's a lot of dope. Your first schooling will be in electronics or communications or seagoing engineering. Your basic nuclear power schooling will be at land-based nuclear power plants. You'll take some breaks now and then, short stretches of sea duty, and you can even take leave between school terms. When you complete this training, you'll be ready to join the Navy's modern nuclear fleet. The Navy's nuclear field program is no snap. There are brothers just like yourself doing it. You can do it too, man. Do you ever get the feeling you're going to be in a steno pool the rest of your life? Why don't you get into something that is interesting, important, and a challenge, like computers, photojournalism, dental technology, lithography, air control, or one of more than 30 different fields the Navy offers. All this is yours in the new Navy, and you will receive the same pay as a man doing the same job and get the same advancements as a man. It may sound a little scary and unfamiliar to you now, but specialty schools will take care of that. They lay it all out for you. It isn't a case of passing or flunking on your own. The instructors are there to help you over any hang-up. They work with you because they want to see you make it. After completion, you may go on to advanced training or into interesting work as an air control tower operator or a link trainer instructor or a photographer or wherever your specialties point. You know, your duties may take you all across the United States or to England, Italy, Hawaii, or other choice overseas locations. Remember what I said earlier, pay that's equal to a man's, advancement equal to a man's. Hey, man, hold it. Wait a minute. Got a job to get to, huh? Then study all night, classes tomorrow, then work again. If that's too much of a hassle, hey, it's got to be another way. Those two guys you just passed back there, the ones in the Navy uniforms, well, they're freshmen just like you. As a matter of fact, one of them plans to major in political science, just like you. The other fellow's going into engineering, but they've got an edge. Something else going for them. They are both in the Naval Reserve Officers Training Corps. They are free to choose their own majors from a selected list. And the Navy picks up most of the tab. That's what I mean, you know. They pick up the biggest part of the bread. And the Navy pays for their tuition fees, the books, uniforms, and then gives them $100 a month to put in their slide beside, you understand? They attend some classes in the Naval Sciences each week, and they go on a six-week cruise in the summer. Now, that's a gas. That's a great cruise, and it gives them a chance to stop off at some interesting ports. Sure, it's something in addition to their regular college work, but you know what one midshipman said? It gives you something that other students can't get. They aren't going to graduate for almost four years, but they already have jobs. They don't knock themselves out just meeting expenses, and when they graduate, They'll be commissioned ensigns in the United States Navy. Or they might be second lieutenants in the Marine Corps. I'm not telling you the NROTC takes everybody that knocks on their door. But if you have what it takes, the Navy recruiter is the man to get you straight.
So, you're a law student, huh? You got a future ahead of you. You'll join a big law firm. Then there are the years of doing legwork for the more senior lawyers. Then handling briefs in the back room. Then if you prove out, you can carry some other lawyer's briefcases around. Well, there's a law firm that will give you valuable courtroom experience almost immediately if you're ready. The name of the firm? The U.S. Navy. In the Navy JAG Corps, you will go to work as a practicing attorney. And that means at work in a courtroom. You understand? My name is Trevor G. Bryan. I'm a member of the uh, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. This is probably the only area where you can start off as a young lawyer uh, handling your own cases uh, and get the wide variety of experience uh, that I've had. Uh, one of the things I will say, again, as regards uh, being a black lawyer in the Navy, is that uh, requests are coming in from all over, almost all over the world, actually, Philippines, uh, anywhere for black lawyers to represent black clients. And uh, it's a very serious matter. And uh, I think that an individual who is reform-minded, who is interested in the problems and the issues that face uh, military people, who is issue, uh, interested in um, challenging uh, legal issues and challenging trial practice, could find uh, uh, much, uh, in terms of experience, uh, much to grow on in, in the practice of Navy law. If you haven't completed your degree, the Navy has programs that will enable you to finish law school. The Navy recruiter has all the answers. So if you're a graduating law student or have some law school left, and you have what it takes, the Navy has a practice for you. You don't know where it is? All around the world. There we go. Yeah. Next month, you step up and get your big fat diploma. Beautiful. The next yeah. step well, is a big Navy job. You, get your degree. you may not believe this, but the Navy has been waiting for you to graduate. Yeah, you. Okay. Listen, you know, the Navy has something special for you. A chance to be a Navy officer. And that's more than just a job. It's responsibility at the management level. It's decision-making, leadership, personal participation. It's rewarding, too, you know. Satisfying it can happen all over the world. You could be working in public affairs or meteorology or information and education, counseling, communications, data processing, personnel, supply, administration, whatever your talent suggests. Actually, it doesn't matter what you studied in college, whether it was music or mathematics. The important thing is that you have what it takes to get an education. That means you have what it takes to become a naval officer. The Navy provides airy, spacious living quarters. But the trend is now to cut out and find your own apartment. You know, girls still like the privacy of their own pad, you know, and a place to entertain their friends. As a Naval Officer candidate, you'll get your indoctrination training here at the Newport, Rhode Island base. And you'll be going to school with the men officer candidates. As a matter of fact, except for some of the engineering courses in PT, all the classes are now co-ed, you dig? Most of the courses will be Navy studies, along with science, math, and leadership. And yes, you will go on a Navy ship. On completion, you will be commissioned an ensign in the U.S. Naval Reserve. Congratulations again, and welcome to <laughs> Capital L, you understand? You've already done the hard part. You've almost completed college. Now step on up to the Navy. Hey, brother, would you like to fly? That's right, fly. Fly Navy. Navy air is something else, and the men who do it are a special breed. In all the world, only a few thousand men have mastered the skies from the deck of a ship. starts right here at Pensacola, Florida, the Annapolis of the air. Here at Naval Air Aviation School's command, you'll get your basic indoctrination. Instructions in aviation science. 
training. Then physical training. The Navy doesn't need dead heroes, you know what I mean? So they teach you how to stay alive. On land and in the sea. You'll get dunked, muddy, cooked, and chilled. You'll find that when you're hungry enough, common weeds taste like soul food, you dig, and keep you going. You'll survive, which is the idea of the whole thing, you know what I mean? And you'll graduate with a commission of ensign in the Navy. About here, you begin to specialize in a special type of aircraft. Maybe you're a jet man. You know what I'm talking about? a multi-engine type, selected to fly the long-range patrol, anti-submarine or logistical support things. Or maybe it's helos for you, you know, helos instead of helicopters. Whatever. You go on to intensive training, and you come out with wings on your chest, you understand? You've joined the elite now. You are no longer just someone. You are someone special. But maybe you take a different tack and trained to become a naval flight officer. An air crew member who operates the complex electronic systems of the aircraft. Early warning systems operations, electronic countermeasures, tactical data systems, anti-submarine tactical, coordination, bombing, and in navigation, or radar intercept. And that's a whole lot. That Navy flight training is really special. My name is Fred Boone, and I know I completed Navy flight training some years ago, and I know it to be the best in the world. Not only do I know it to be the best in the world, but most airlines know it to be the best in the world, too. Just six weeks after I was discharged, I had a job with one of the best companies here in America. And the main reason I was hired, I tell you, was because I was trained by the Navy. Navy flight training also prepares you for many other fields in addition to the one I'm just in. It, it prepares you uh, for anything you want to do in life. It's not only the, the technical training you get, it's the uh, sheer confidence that it builds in you. It uh, gives you uh, a sense of pride that will let you uh, do just about anything that you choose to do with your life. But maybe flying isn't your thing. Okay, I understand. You'd still like to move into the irresponsible decision-making leadership position. And immediately, right? In civilian employment, you might be a trainee for a long time. Navy Officers Candidate School is for men who want to move immediately toward responsibility. Responsibility of a division officer aboard ship. That picture there on the wall is of Jesse L. Brown. He was the Navy's first black naval aviator. And the ship that we were on is named after him. And that represents a Navy first. There are quite a few firsts in the Navy these days. I've been around for about 16 years now, and I've seen quite a few important changes occur in the Navy. I think that from my own point of view, most of the changes have been positive. But I think what we're talking about is uh, the kind of improvement that is important to a black man. And that is the fact that if you are capable and if you are able to get a job done, that you can do it in this man's Navy today. The kind of thing I'm talking about is a guy that's willing to get down with the program, that if he knows what he wants to do or is willing to let somebody offer something to him that he can do, then all he has to do is have the initiative and the willingness to get with it. The opportunity exists. The responsibility of taking charge of the work, the welfare, the advancement of 10 to 50 men. You might be in operations where you'd be responsible for communications, navigation, and tactical operation of the ship. You could work in the executive department, become a staff officer, an oceanographer, civil engineer, meteorologist, specialist in naval intelligence. Your salary, even as a junior Navy officer, is competitive with civilian employment. 
and with it comes use of officers' clubs and Navy exchange tours, airline discounts, and medical care. All this and you earn 30 days paid annual vacation. You can expect promotions and pay boost on a fairly regular basis. You get in addition regular pay increases due to time and service. If excitement, adventure, travel, responsibility, and advancement appeals to you, talk it over now. Go see your Navy recruiting officer. The Navy's been waiting for you to graduate, both of you. The whole world's been waiting, too. Well, that's it. It's what's happening in the new Navy. It's opportunity, advancement, good pay, equality, and a lot of things that count. The new Navy is together, all together. And another thing, when you see that brother or sister at the recruiting office, do me a favor, Jim. Tell them Lou Ross sent you. Thank <laughs> you.